What is up guys? This is going to be a super quick last minute video uh, because so many people are asking me which legendary to make. Uh, I figured I could just make a video and point people to that as it would be a lot easier to kind of explain my logic and reasoning behind kind of potential legendary choices, what each legendary is good for um, and why you should choose potentially certain ones, why you should wait uh, and we'll see what happens. So. First of all, we're going to talk about the powers, then we're going to talk about the stats, then we're going to talk about uh, which slot they should go on. So first of all, Penitent 1. Uh, we actually have access to this right now. This was from the last week's Torghast, so most people will have it. Uh, and this one is going to be good if, obviously, Radiance is going to be needed, which is going to be the case if there is going to be a lot of burst damage in the game. Right now, the game is quite bursty. We're going to see next week when Arena starts quite exactly how bursty that is. Do we need to play Radiance every game? If the answer is yes, then this is a really, really good choice. Uh, so we're going to wait till next next week, play a couple of days, see if that's the case, then we're gonna, I'm going to go for this one. That's, that's literally what I'm going to do. Uh, if you can get away with not playing Radiance every single game, and this is, we're talking about threes here rather than twos. If you can get away with not playing Radiance every single game, then this one is not worth it because half the games, you're not going to be running Radiance. You're not going to get any value out of this legendary. Um, and it's going to pigeonhole you into running Radiance when you otherwise wouldn't. And you can potentially go Oom against some comps where you otherwise wouldn't. Um, so keep that in mind. Second one, Reflection. This one is kind of the, the Jack of all trades legendary. It's not Biss against anything, but it's going to be usable against everything. Uh, and it's going to actually have value against everything. Now, the concern with this one is that games are too bursty to actually get value out of it. And that has kind of its, its I guess, pros and cons because it's kind of linear, right? You're, you're still always shielding at the same rate. You're going to be using Rapture. So technically, it's actually going to be a higher percentage of your damage if the game is shorter and most of the game is, you know, or a larger portion of your game is spent with people in Rapture shields because this is where you're going to get most of the reflect from, people going into these shields. Uh, and what will end up potentially happening is people will take a load of reflect damage and then when you get CC on uh, on their healer, then the DPS will be at a lower percentage than they usually would. So this is a big plus for this. Whereas the downside of this is obviously this is good. In dampening games, you're going to have higher PvE damage over the course of the game. Uh, and this is going to be probably your second most highest damage done. Uh, these games are not going to happen as much if the game is super bursty. So there's less of a pro of, for it in that regard. Uh, with that being said, if the game doesn't, uh, if you don't have to go Radiance every single game, this is probably what I'm going to go for. Third option is Kiss of Death. Uh, and this is really nice against Mages and Warlocks in particular, I would say, just because it means your death is about a 10 second cooldown. So if you do get faked on death, uh, it's more likely to come back up you know, in the near future, or if you use your death for something else, it's going to come back a lot up a lot quicker than it would if it's 18 seconds base. Um, so this is this is going to have value against those classes, uh, where maybe some other legendaries wouldn't, but it's not something that I would recommend going for straight away. Clarity of Mind, I think, doesn't really have that much um, value in PvP. Maybe there's, again, later in the in the season, if it becomes more damp, this is good for mana. Uh, and this might have a value there, but I can't see it happening, honestly. Uh, I think this one is not really suitable for PvP overall. Measured Contemplation is basically a slightly different version of the Depth of Shadows slash uh, Spirit Essence from BFA. And the downside of this is it doesn't stack up, you know, in as, in as smaller kind of increments it's it's big increments every 50 every 15 seconds so if you are forced to mend after 14 seconds you get no value from this uh so when the game is as bursty as it is now i feel like this is not as worth as if the game was a little bit slower and you're not mending as often because you're mostly healing with atonement so then this gets a chance to you know stack up to you know two three potentially four stacks so right now i would say this is not not worth going for as your first legendary Twins of the Sun Priestess. So this is going to be really good if you're playing with a caster, for example, in RMP. Um, the only downside of this is you really don't want to use this against teams that have a lot of purge. So like anything with a shaman, shadow priest, uh, even disc priest, you know they're gonna they're gonna be able to purge this off relatively easily. Hunters can purge now, 
Uh, so there's there's a lot of options to purge this and you really want to, you know, preserve those PIs. So this is really good in RMP because obviously you have the cross CC or the ability to cross CC um, and do a really powerful go with your mage and yourself having PI. So I think that this is definitely uh, something you could potentially save and wait for if you're playing, if you're, or if you're planning on playing RMP. Um, but do keep in mind that it is, there are going to be comps where you're not going to get as much value out of this. Uh, we have Cauterizing Shadows. When Persia Wicked expires on a target, three allies within 30 yards are healed for 716. I don't think this is that good. Uh, 716 seems quite low. It's not going to proc that often. Um, ideally, your Purge the Wicked's aren't going to expire anyway. Um, so I would say this is not that suitable at the moment in the current Bursty meta. Vault of Heavens is going to be really nice uh, against Cleaves when you're getting trained as a priest. Um... It's actually going to give us, you know, some mobility, especially with door. If you're playing Venethe, which you should be as disc. Um, but again, it's not going to be useful against everything. So I guess it's not a first wave legendary. It's more something that you're going to switch to against Cleaves. Um, then we have the class specific legendaries, a bunch of which are pretty much irrelevant. Uh, you can discount straight away. Uh, stable Phantasma Lure, Eye of the Jailer, More Rattle, all irrelevant. Uh, Vitality Sacrifice, I don't think you're going to have a chance to stack that up. Um, I'm not sure what consists of significant damage, but uh, an extra 9% healing versus some of the other powers I don't think is worth it. Um, but we'll have to see later on in the day. I'm definitely not going to be you know, thinking of going this early on. This is Renown 14 anyway, so not really something to think about right now. Um, we also have Norgnon's Saga City. And again, I think this is not suitable for Arena just because it's so much extra to kind of think about and to keep in mind and, and to keep still while you're doing it. Arena is generally quite mobile, so I feel like this is going to put a constraint on you that you just don't want to have to deal with um, in Arena. So I'm not going to be going that anytime soon. Maybe something to test out in twos and, and kind of figure out later on in the expansion, I would say. Uh, then we have a, a, a good shout, actually, which is Sever's Proclamation. And this one will be actually used if if the game is fast enough paced that everyone has to use Trinket every game because you die in two goes. Then everyone is going to be running Trinket, obviously, which means that obviously this doesn't stack with Relentless. So no one using Relentless, which means that this is now your best option. Um, and I think that, you know, it's kind of a toss up between this and Radiance. If that's the case, uh, there's going to be CC comps where you're going to want to run Trinket and this. And then there's going to be more, you know, comps focused on just doing really high AOE damage. And against that, you're going to want to be playing Radiance. So, again, it's kind of a toss up. You're going to need to have two legendaries to switch in and out if the game remains at that pace. Uh, so I would say, depending on your race, it's sort of up to you which one you choose in that regard. Personally, I would recommend Radiance. Uh, just because I'm human and I can I can human out of a stun. Uh, but yeah, it is it's something that's going to be very personal to you, I think, in that regard. But we have to wait and see how Arena feels uh, on Wednesday. Uh, the other two, ENR and Judgment of the Arbiter. I feel like this is just completely irrelevant for Arena. It's more of something that you're going to use with other people that have it too. Uh, seems very PvE-ish. Echo of ENR. Your spells and abilities have a low chance to summon a, sp a spiritual familiar to your side, increasing your damage by 10%, healing by 10%, or damage reduction by 10% for 10 seconds based on your roll. So I guess it would be healing for us. Um, the effect is duplicated on up to three allies at 50% affected. So this is kind of okay, but yeah, 10% healing versus some of the other effects just doesn't seem to cut it for me. So I think that one's somewhat irrelevant for now. So ones to keep an eye on, I would say, is Cephas uh, and Radiance, if it's Bursty. Reflective, if it's not. Kiss of Death, probably in Wave 2, uh, with Vault of Heavens and Twins of Sun Priestess, if you're playing RMP, uh, or some, some other caster comp. Again, probably Wave 2, I would say. Uh, so that's all the powers. As for the slots, I would say my... my I'm not going to tell you exactly what slot to run everything in, but rather how to think about it. So the way I'm going to try and try and 
gear my legendaries is I'm going to go for obviously helm, shoulders, and chest because they've got the highest uh, intellect values and these items are generally going to be higher eye level than the other gear that you've got. So you're going to get the biggest intellect benefit from the, the legendary versus an item that you would other, otherwise have in that slot. Um, so obviously you want to try and tend towards that, but if you have a really bad item in another slot, uh, like really, really bad. You could consider building in that slot instead, but this is like temporary benefit, right? Because you're going to keep these legendaries for a while and you're going to upgrade that slot. So the main thing you want to consider is you go to your PVP vendor and you look at the other options for that legendary. Okay, so let's do crystalline reflection, for example. So shoulders and hands. Now I know from the vendor you can get Versa Haste shoulders and Versa Haste hands. There are some pieces you can't do this, with cloth at least. If you're playing another specialization or whatever, uh, loot specialization, I don't even know why you're watching this video to be honest. Um, but yeah, with cloth you can get Versa Haste shoulders and, and gloves. So I think it's fine to build the shoulders uh, on this one. Uh, Penitent one is feet and back. I actually don't know if there's a, a Haste Versa back available. I believe there is. Um, I don't think there is a haste versa feet. So I think with this one, you would build the boots. I think actually feet is one of the only items in the game that doesn't have any versa haste from the PVP vendor or from the raid or from the, uh, the mythics. So this is definitely something to consider. Um, taking on the boots instead of the back because now you can get versa haste, obviously, because you can customize it. Uh, which brings me obviously to the last point is people are asking me what stats should they go for on the legendary? Same as the rest of the gear, go Versa Haste. Um, right now, that's our kind of early strongest stats. Maybe something else will open up a little bit, bit later now that crit is 200%, but for now, Versa Haste is the play. So that's kind of the summary. Uh, I hope that it was kind of answering all of your questions. I've had a lot of them today, and I hope this kind of explained it a little bit better, my thought process behind why each thing is good. Uh, yeah, that's that's all I've got to say on the matter. Hopefully see you guys on the stream tomorrow and for the rest of the week and uh, starting Arena next week. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.